Good evening. Good to see you out this evening. If you would, stand with me and turn to hymn number 392. Hymn number 392, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. Hymn number 392. On the first. We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. These truths in God's word he hath given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be in heaven no dropping or pining no wishing for elsewhere to be God's light is forever there shining how beautiful heaven must be how beautiful heaven must be sweet home of the happy and free fair haven of rest for the weary how beautiful heaven must be pure waters of life there are flowing and all who will drink may be free rare jewels of splendor are glowing how beautiful heaven must be how beautiful heaven must be sweet home of the happy and free fair haven of rest for the weary how beautiful heaven must be the angels so sweetly are singing up there by the beautiful sea sweet chords from their gold harps are ringing how beautiful heaven must be how beautiful heaven must be sweet home of the happy and free fair haven of rest for the weary how beautiful heaven must be very good singing please remain standing amen let's go to the lord in prayer father we thank you uh, lord for the opportunity to be in your house and the Lord, what a wonderful song we get to sing of, of a place that you have prepared for those who have called upon Christ to be their Savior. Lord, we thank you for who you are tonight. Lord, we pray that you speak to us. And uh, Lord, use our pastor as he brings the lesson tonight. And uh, Lord, may we be more like Christ when we leave this place. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Hymn number 393. Hymn 393, Face to Face. Number 393, face to face. On the first, here we go. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. Face to face I shall behold him, far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Only faintly now I see him with the darkling veil between. But a blessed day is coming when his glory shall be seen. Face to face I shall behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face with all his glory, I shall see him by and by. What rejoicing in his presence when our banished grief and pain, when the crooked ways are straightened and the dark things shall be plain. Face 
face to face I shall behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Face to face, oh blissful moment, face to face to see and know. Face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so. Face to face I shall behold Him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all His glory, I shall see Him by and by. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Just a few things to go over. Men, don't forget this Saturday morning we have our men's prayer breakfast at 8 o'clock here at the church. And we're looking forward to that. Tonight's the last night to sign up with that. And so if you haven't done so already, that is on the Welcome Center out there. I want to say thank you for all those who helped out on Sunday for the dinner, those in the kitchen, those who cleaned up. Appreciate all the, the help. Um, in that area and uh, we had a good day on Sunday and uh, then our features are in for uh, the new devotionals and the glow and the glow and the darks are out there and uh, so uh, make sure that uh, you pick up those things and uh, those are a blessing uh, to those that use them and it's a good tool to get our young people and and uh, spending time with the Lord and uh, learning the habit of devotions. Let's have our men come and uh, take up the offering this evening, and uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Don't forget, April 30th is the deadline for the donations, so you can be able to uh, claim that for your taxes uh, for 2024 uh, next year. If you need more information about that, you can see Jeremy or Pastor. We do have some information out there on the tables, and uh, I, I would encourage you to look at those. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, we ask that you would just take this offering and bless it to abundance. We thank you for all that you do for us and your many blessings in our life. Uh, we ask that you would just help us have wisdom and, and uh, using this in the right way so we can see more people come to know Christ as their Savior. We pray all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Out in the foyer, there is uh, a little table on this side of the doorway over there. And on there, there is a box and a piece of paper in front of it showing the two different options that we have boiled down to for a new logo for the church. All right, one has a steeple on it, that is option A. And then the other one is the letter G with kind of a cross on the inside of it with the name of the church underneath of it. And so, uh, if you're 18 years old, I think everybody in, in this uh, room is over 18 years old, and uh, you'd like to go ahead and vote, uh, just take the piece of paper uh, and write down on it A or B, all right, not A and B, all right, that'll really confuse us, all right, but A or B, and uh, just drop it in the little box out there and give us an idea which way we're going to go with that. And so uh, you can see what it's going to look like. You say, what are you going to do with the logo? Well, a lot of different things. We're going to put it on the side of the buses. We're going to make up some, some T-shirts or uh, some polos with it embroidered on it. Just kind of get our name out and kind of get an idea or trying to get people to understand uh, when they see that 
uh, that represents our church, all right? Just a, a good way to try to uh, get the word out that w of who we are, where we're at, and all that. So uh, uh, if you'd like to do that, that's good. Only one vote per person, all right? So if you got one that you really like, don't fill out 100 pieces of paper and drop them in there, all right? So uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and if you can do that tonight, that would be great. Can we extend that till Sunday? All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, we're going to try to extend that to Sunday, but uh, uh, everybody take time and vote for that this evening, all right, if you could. That would be great. All right, Randy, would you come? All right, take your hymn books one more time. Hymn number 358, hymn number 358, Jesus Loves Even Me. <clears throat> hymn number 358, on the first. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Very good singing. You may be seated. All right. Let's go ahead and take up a, uh, our prayer request sheet. I would like to have you remember to pray for Ray Beebe. Uh, Ray is uh, continuing to have some health problems. Uh, keep him in prayer. Possibly a slipped disc in his back. They don't know for sure. Uh, but and he's got some other issues but keep him in your prayers if you would please and uh, and then if you would uh, pray for brother Joe uh, brother Joe's dad passed away and uh, going to be heading out of state again here uh, next week and keep him in prayer for that as he he travels all right uh, pray for Dorothy Cromer going to be having uh, surgery on the 16th keep him in your prayers keep her in your prayers pray for tom anders he's having a heart test on the same day up in michigan and uh, on the on the 16th pray for him if you would all right so pray for dorothy pray for tom and uh, pray for mike cook and some positive news uh, still a long way to go but but to keep him in your prayers uh, pray for Menye Schmidt, uh, actually a, a great, great nephew of mine, adopted boy from Africa, and uh, involved, at the same time Mike was involved in a car accident, he was involved in a car accident uh, in Cleveland, and uh, he uh, is very bad shape, uh, but uh, his jaw was broken two places, uh, he had bleeding on the brain, uh, pelvic was fractured, uh, ribs were broke, uh, just really bad. So uh, keep Manier Schmidt in prayer, if you would, please. Um, and then uh, continue to pray for our men that's in the military. Pray for Bryce Thompson. Pray for Lyle McDonald. Pray that God would keep them safe and well. Let's pray for our nation. Pray for America. Pray for Israel, if you would. Let's pray for our economy. All right. 
Anybody else have one to add to the list tonight? Anybody? Yes. All right, pray for Gary Deal for health and pray for Rachel Herrera for health and guidance. All right, anybody else? Brother Rick. Okay. Okay. Pray for Jeffrey Berg, B E R G. All right. Anybody else? Yes. All right. Pray for Sheila Cook. Uh, she's down in Mobile. Correct, Mobile, Alabama, uh, with uh, their son Michael. Uh, pray for Michael for health, but also pray for Sheila, comfort and guidance. All right, traveling mercies. Anybody else? Yes. Unspoken? Anybody else have an unspoken request? And another hand I saw over here, Gay. All right, pray for Brother Mark for health, if you would, please. All right? Yes. And who is Charles? An uncle? Okay, all right. All right, pray for Charles Johnson for health. He doesn't live around here, does he? Owen Carey, okay. All right. And uh, Chris? Okay. All right, pray for Chris and Kendall and the family as they travel this weekend. Anybody else? Special prayer request, going once, going twice. Yes, Cricket. Good, praise the Lord. Right. All right, pray for Jeanette Young, if you would please, for, for health and comfort. Pray for her husband, Steve, that he'll come to know the Lord. All right, anybody else have one to add? All right, pray for Brother Joe as they're going to be traveling on Thursday, correct? Yeah, keep, uh, keep them in prayer. All right, anybody else have one? Pray for Dorothy. She's going to be having surgery on the 16th. Keep her in your prayers. All right, anybody else? Yes, Rick? All right, pray for Gary Booth for health. Anybody else? 
All right, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father in heaven, Lord, as we come before you, uh, we are thankful, Lord, for your goodness to us. Uh, Lord, I do pray that you'd be with these prayer requests. Lord, I pray that you would answer these prayer requests, Lord, according to thy will. I pray, Lord, tonight for uh, Steve Young. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, speak to his heart. Lord, draw him to you, Lord, that he might come to know you as his Savior. I pray, Lord, tonight also, Lord, for Rachel Herrera. Lord, I pray that you'd have your, he <coughs> your healing hand on her. Lord, comfort her, I pray. Lord, be with uh, all the unspoken requests. I pray, Lord, tonight for Brother Mark Sterling. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, have your healing hand on him. Help him, I pray. Lord, be with Charles Johnson. Lord, I pray that you would uh, watch over him, uh, Lord, and grant to him health. Lord, uh, reveal your salvation to him, I pray. Lord, I pray that you be with Chris and Kendall. Lord, as they're going to be traveling this weekend, Lord, keep them safe, I pray, and bring them back. Help the Lord to be refreshed in their travels. <clears throat> I pray, Lord, for Gary Booth, Lord, that you would uh, help him. And Lord, I pray that you'd have your healing hand on him. And Lord, through this, I pray, Lord, that you draw him to you. I pray, Lord, tonight for uh, Brother Beebe. Lord, I pray you'd have your healing hand on him. Lord, uh, help him, Lord, to rejoice in the infirmities that he has, realizing, Lord, that uh, you're in control and you do all things well. Lord, I do pray that you be with Mary Anna and the baby and, Lord, to continue to heal them. And, Lord, I pray that you be with Dorothy Cromer. Tom Anders, Lord, uh, help them this next week, Lord, as they get ready for uh, heart tests and surgery, Lord, I pray you'd help them. I pray, Lord, for Mike Cook and, Lord, for Manny Smith, Lord, that you'd have your healing hand on them. Raise them up, I pray. <coughs> Lord, I do pray that you be with Sheila, Lord, and comfort her and guide her and and grant to her traveling mercies, I pray. Lord, be with uh, Michael's family and help them, I pray. Lord, I do pray that you be with Brother Joe and, and uh, his family and, Lord, the, the family, all of his family, his brothers and sisters and his mom. Lord, I pray you comfort them in their loss. Lord, give everybody traveling mercies as they head down for the funeral. Uh, encourage them, I pray. Lord, I pray that you be with uh, Bryce Thompson and Lyle McDonald. Lord, watch over them, keep them safe, and keep them well, and keep them right with thee, I pray. Lord, I pray for our nation. Lord, I pray that you would uh, just put a hedge of protection around us. Lord, I pray for our leaders. Lord, help them to make good and godly decisions. Lord, decisions that would glorify you and, Lord, that would uh, keep our country safe and, and uh, Lord, that it would protect our country. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Israel. <coughs> pray, Lord, that you'd uh, help Israel, protect them. Lord, I pray that uh, they would come to know the Lord as their Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, for our economy, Lord, that we'd see our economy turn around. And Lord, I pray that you'd be with uh, Paul and Carol, Lord. I pray you'd have your healing hand on them. Lord, be with Chloe Butts here tonight, Lord. Continue to have your healing hand on her. And Lord, be with Kennedy Dunn also. Lord, have your healing hand on her. Now, Father, we do ask and pray, Lord, that you'd help us, guide us, and direct us. And we'll give you the praise and glory for everything that's said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take our Bibles and turn to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. I'm not too sure if next week or maybe the following week or in a, a next month we're going to start our next series on the book of Revelation. And as we're going through, I mean, uh, we have gone through the first and second and third John and Brother Daniel, I... I Listen to your your uh, Bible study last week. You did a great job. I want you to know that. And uh, 
a lot of people made comments. They said, Daniel did a good job. I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, I thought so too. And so I was listening. And uh, later, I wasn't listening during the ordination, wasn't listening to it. But uh, anyway, uh, J.R. sends his regards. And since now he's a bona fide ordained Baptist preacher, I told him, I said, why don't you come over and preach for us some Sunday night? They don't have a Sunday night service because they're renting a building. It's not available. And so he said he's going to come over. And I says, we'll have you preach. He's all excited about that. The kids, I can't believe how big they are. Uh, their little girl is now in second grade. And uh, yeah, and uh, they got a little boy. It's going to be, in, I think he's either in kindergarten or he's four. He's going to be in kindergarten. What's that? He's going into kindergarten. But uh, just those kids are as cute as a button. And, uh, but anyway, uh, you pray for J.R. and Gloria. They're involved in a church plant in Goshen, Indiana. And just north of Goshen, there's a, a town called Bristol, Indiana. And there was an independent Baptist church there. The uh, pastor was well up in years, and he resigned or either resigned or passed away. Anyway, either way, he's no longer there uh, at the church, and the church is without a pastor, and so they've been holding services up there for them also. And uh, so you pray. It might be doors of opportunity for JR or somebody else in the future, so uh, keep, uh, keep them in prayer. <coughs> Psalm 37, we're going to start with verse number 1. It seems like wherever we turn, there are people that are struggling. They are struggling with uh, personal relationships. They're struggling with their health. They're struggling with their finances. They're struggling with decisions. I mean, regardless of where you go, people are struggling. And as they struggle, they find themselves worrying. It's human nature. But I'm glad that we've got a divine nature that can overcome that. But nevertheless, even in our best Christian life, worry will creep in. We'll go ahead and we'll say, we'll give it to God. How many times do you give it to God and then you take it back? You do that? Anybody? You guys are okay. I didn't see any hands at first. I thought, man, is that just me? we got some people who are waving both hands, all right? So, you know, we'll go ahead and something will happen, and we pray and we give it to God, and then immediately we try to figure it out. May I remind you that his ways are not our ways? We, he knows the end from the beginning, and we just have to learn to trust him. God does all things well. And so as we look at Psalm 37, the psalmist give us, gives us a recipe for peace in verse 1 through verse number 11. And I want to talk to you about what the psalmist has to say about having peace. In the midst of every problem, in the midst of every trial, in the midst of every decision, God can grant you peace. You know, he is the Prince of Peace. Amen? And there's nothing too hard for God. And so, let's look at Psalm 37, verse number 1 through verse number 11. I want you to notice some things. It says, fret not. You ought to highlight that in your Bible. A modern day version says, not a version of the Bible, but just an understanding, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> or maybe that's a song, all right? Fret not. Look what it says in verse number seven. The second line in that says, fret not. In other words, don't worry. Christian, you can give your problems and your trials and your heartaches and you can give them to God. 38 years of pastoring here at Grace Baptist Church, 
there are many times when things have not gone the way I planned. There are many times when difficulties rose up, along with that, misunderstandings, along with that, the attack of the devil, and sometimes you get worried about things. He says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for your word tonight. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. And Lord, the comfort that you can give from both. We ask and pray, Lord, you would help us, guide us, direct us. And Lord, those that are carrying heavy burdens tonight, Lord, those that are weighted down with care, I pray, Lord, that we would learn to cast all of our care upon you because you care for us. I pray, Lord, that you guide us and direct us and help us and we'll give you the praise and glory for everything said and done in Jesus' name. Amen. The world is a restless place. It's filled with hurry and scurry. You know, growing up in the 1960s, I never heard of anything called road rage. But you hear about it all the time today. It was more of a relaxed time. It was more of a time when you just kind of, you did your job, you went home, you enjoyed your family. At least that's the way it was where I grew up. I grew up out in the country, north, uh, east of Fostoria. And uh, we went to the grocery store maybe once every two weeks or maybe once a week. Most of my summer was filled with riding bike and going down the local swimming hole and uh, catching sunfish at the end of a cane pole and uh, playing baseball in the summertime. It was, a, it was a calm time. It was a time when there was peace and tranquility. But that's not the way it is today. Everybody's in a hurry. Everybody has to be there two hours before. It's a, a difficult uh, time in which we're living in. It is a time that is filled, like I said, with hurry and scurry. It is a time uh, with fighting and wars. It is a time with racial tension going on. I thought all that stuff was behind us when we got into the 80s and 90s, I, but not so. A time that's filled with domestic violence and drugs and shootings and all of those things. But you know, in the midst of it all, I'm glad that we can have peace. So tonight I want to give you what the Bible has to say about the believers having peace in their life. You know, if you are going through difficulties, and I know that some of you are going through difficulties, financial difficulties, health difficulties, interpersonal relationship difficulties, there are some that aren't at peace with themselves. There are some that are not at peace with others. Some are looking for a way of escape. 
Well, I've learned a long time ago, running from your problems never solves anything. And we need to learn to face those problems in a biblical way. And as we, we do what God tells us to do in the midst of our storms in life, God can grant to us peace. In John 14, verse number 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, in John chapter number 14, can anybody tell me what the few, fir few first verses say in John 14? Anybody? What does it say? Amen. It looks like you memorized that. Done a lot of funerals, yeah. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know, I'm glad that regardless of where we're at, God can give us peace. In John chapter 4, or John chapter 14, it is just hours before Jesus is betrayed. John 13 is that great chapter where he is in the upper room and given the upper room discourse with his disciples. It's there he institutes the Lord's Supper. It was there where he said, one of you shall betray me. Jesus being God, he knew exactly what was ahead of him. He left the upper room and he went to the garden and prayed. He took, took James and John and Peter with him and said, watch and pray. And the closest fell asleep on him. While he was in the garden, the, disciple, or the, uh, the disciples were sleeping and Judas, who had betrayed him, came and sold him out for just a few pieces of silver. And while he, all this was getting ready to happen, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. My peace I give unto you. While Jesus Christ was ready to be judged and dishonored and then nailed to a cross, the Bible says there in John 14, verse 27, my peace I give unto you. He had peace while all this was going on. And he offers that peace to you. Amen? Do you have the peace of God in your life? I hope and pray you do. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that is only possible when you know the Prince of Peace. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's peace is only available through the Prince of Peace. If you know peace, you can have peace. And if you don't know the Prince of Peace, you're not going to have peace. The Bible says, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So how can that happen? Well, let's go through Psalm 37, verse number 11, through verse number uh, 1 through verse number 11. The very first thing I want you to underline or mark is that phrase, fret not. What does fretting not? If a person is fretting, it means to worry. What does worrying reveal in the life of the believer? Any? Lack of faith? Anything else? Not trusting God? All right. Anything else? Fear. 
The Bible says perfect love, what? Casteth out fear. So we are to not to fret. It means, if you look it up in your Bible dictionary, it'll mean to grieve or to be angry, to worry. Why? Look what it says. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Why? God is in control. In the worst situation in your eyes, God is still in control. God has got a plan and God has got a purpose for all that he does. Our job is to go ahead and look at it with the eyes of the Lord and then submit to his control. God is in control. Has God ever lied to you? No. Has God always been good to you? Yes. God is in control. We, don't, we are not to worry. We are not to worry against the workers of iniquity. As a Christian, there's going to be times when people are going to misunderstand you. They're going to, they're going to go ahead and malign you. They're going to speak evil about you. Don't worry about it. You go on and you serve God anyway. People have asked me, I had Brother Blue the other day, he says, how did you make it here in 38 years? I said, you, you just have to grow roots and stay. And you have to stay in the good times and you have to stay in the bad times. You just have to stay. You, can't allow, you cannot allow people to go ahead and detour you from the direction that God has pointed you. Amen? Amen. So fret not. Don't be angry. Don't worry. God is in control. He is in control over the wicked, the wicked that are around you. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. You know, so many times in the ministry here in Oak Harbor, there has been individuals that have said, well, you said this and you said that and you didn't do this and you didn't do that. I just have to remember this. For they shall be soon cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. I had a man come in a few years back and all he did, he looked for something that he could pick on. And he, he, I went and he, he quit coming and I went over to his home here in Oak Harbor and, uh, and he pulled out a tablet ledger. And he had about two pages of things over about a three-month period of things that I said and things that he thought I wasn't doing right. And man, he just let me have it. And I, I told him, I said, well, and I, and I tried to explain those things that he said. And it wasn't going to make any difference. He, he, was, he was bent on trying to destroy me and destroy this church. And it didn't take long, and I said, well, this is, it's pretty apparent that uh, you put no confidence in me or the things that we're doing. No, I don't. He said, we're not coming back. I said, well, that's fine. See you later. And uh, I left. And then he didn't go to church. And then I read his name in the newspaper where he got in trouble and got thrown in jail. Not just once, but several times. Got thrown in jail for domestic violence against his wife. He got thrown in jail for stealing over at uh, a, a local Home Depot. And the list could go on. You know, I've learned this. Those people that are viciously attacking your, and I hate to word, use the word shortcomings, but don't we have all, the, all have those? Amen that are nitpicking about every little thing that you do. But, I mean, if it's not that you're too soft-spoken, I in one week I had one time somebody come to me and say, you know what, you're too outspoken. And then another time, the same week, somebody said, 
you, you need to get on people and just holler and yell a little bit more, pretty much what he said. Just the exact opposites in the exact same week. You know, those individuals that said those things are not even in church. But they could tell somebody how to run the work of God. I'm just here to tell you, we better not worry about what man says or what man does. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So number one, you want to have God's peace? Don't worry. Be happy. Don't fret about things. You go ahead and do the right thing before God. Regardless of what anybody else says. You make decisions based on the word of God. And you make decisions based on the leading of God, which is based on the word of God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So if the decisions that you are making are based upon the word of God and based on the leading of the spirit of God, which is based on the word of God, if people criticize and complain, you just follow God. Amen? So you want to have God's peace in your life? Fret not. Look at verse 3. What's the first four words? You want to have God's peace in your life? Trust in the Lord. You want to get upset? Put your trust in man. You want to get aggravated? Put your trust in politicians. That'll really upset you. All right? You want to have peace? Give it to God. Amen? He does all things well. The word trust means to be confident or sure. It means to be bold. Why? God never changes. What was right 6,000 years ago is still right today. God never changes. Why? What or who else can we trust? Trust your banker? Well, you better not do that. You trust your neighbor? He'll disappoint you. Oh, I'm going to trust the pastor. Well, don't trust me too much. I put my boots on the same way you do. I make mistakes because I'm a human being just like you are. Try not to. We are to trust in the Lord. That's where our confidence ought to be. That's where our trust ought to be. God is the one that you can trust. He never changes. So therefore, Christian, when times get hard, don't give up. When times get tough, don't quit. When things go wrong as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to sigh but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. We can't quit on God. When things got tough for the disciples, in John chapter 6, Jesus after the multitudes went away, Jesus looked at the disciples and said, will you also go away? And immediately Peter responded, Lord, where shall we go? Where can we go? Thou hast the words of life. Where can we go? There's no one else we can turn to. There is no one else that has the answers for life and eternity. We need to trust in the Lord. And then look at verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Delight thyself. Now, when I think of delight, I think of Friendly's Ice Cream. How many of you remember the Friendly Ice Cream restaurants? They had a happy ending Sunday. After you had your meal, you got this little little uh, Sunday and... Uh, 
of course, my favorite was always the Reese's Pieces Sunday. Man, it had the peanut butter syrup on it, it had peanut uh, butter uh, M&Ms on it, you know, the Reese's Pieces, and uh, it had, of course, whipped cream and cherry and all kinds of good stuff, you know. And uh, they called it a happy ending Sunday. When I think of delight, I think of a happy ending Sunday. Now, that's not a biblical definition, but it sure does fit my mentality, all right? And the word delight means to be soft and pliable. Well, that doesn't really fit the happy ending Sunday, but anyway, that's the way my mind thinks, especially when it comes to food. It, in Strong's, it says this, and I don't know if I necessarily agree with this, but it gives us an idea it says effeminate. There is something wrong when these women are involved in cage fighting. And they're in there, and I, I was I, watching a video or something, and all of a sudden this thing popped on, and there's these two women that are built like the Incredible Hulk, and they've got boxes of these little bitty gloves on, and they're beating each other half to death. That is not my idea of a lady. I'm sorry, it's just not. The idea of a Christian lady ought to be delicate. It ought to be someone that uh, is feminine in nature. Not a brawler. Have you ever noticed that these police shows that are on TV, there's always one or two women in these with the other guys, and they just beat the snot out of these guys. I don't know if that's the type of company that I want to keep, all right? And there's, maybe there's some out there that would do that. I don't know, but that's not the idea of the word delight. Soft, pliable, effeminate, or luxurious, or delicate. In other words, we ought to be soft and pliable in the hands of the master. He should be our strong tower. He should be our refuge. He should be the one that we go ahead and trust in. He is our protector. He's our shield. He's our defense. We are to delight ourselves in him. Why? God's in control. God knows best. God will take care of his children. Psalm 18, verse 30, it says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. In Proverbs 3, verse 17, her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Now, this speaks of God's wisdom, which comes from God's law being applied. So, uh, Proverbs 3, verse 1 through 17. It's not saying that God is a her, but it is saying that God's wisdom personified is described as her. Psalm 112 and verse 1, Praise you the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Psalm, 1, or Psalm 19 verse 10, more to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. See, we're to delight ourselves in the ways of God. Let God mold us. He is the potter and we are the what? Clay. What does the master potter do? He molds us. He shapes us. He refines us. I remember when I was in high school, we, in art class, the art teacher and a few other uh, people went over to Bascom, Ohio. Uh, Bascom is just a real small community about the size of Lindsay, Ohio, on Route 18 between Faustoria and uh, uh, Tiffin. Over there, there was a, a tile company. Now, most of the times when we see farmers out there and they're having their fields tiled, they're putting these big coils of 
plastic pipe underneath the ground, drainage tile. Well, that's not the way they used to do it. They used to use clay tile. And uh, they would have a, a trencher, and then there would be guys down there laying the tile in the trench. There were clay tiles, red clay tiles. Some of them were a concrete mix, but most of them were just a, a, like the terracotta pots that we, we get for pottery. And they, they actually dug the clay over there in Bascom, and then they had big kills there, and they would fire those tile to make them hard, and, and uh, then the, they would use them. Well, we went over there, and we got a bunch of clay, and got a couple burlap bags full of this stuff, brought it to the art class, and then we had to knead the clay. Now, ladies, you ever knead dough? All right, you sit there and you push it and work it and get it just right for whatever you're making, whether it's bread or pizza dough or whatever. Well, we had to knead the clay. And we'd get a big ball of clay about this big around, and we'd throw it on this piece of concrete covered with canvas, and we'd sit there and start pushing it until we found a piece of stone or a piece of gravel. And the art teacher said, you got to make sure you get every piece of stone out of the clay. So there's a guitar wire there, and you'd slice it on that, and you'd knead it, and you'd slice it, and you'd pick out a stone, and you'd throw it away. You say, why'd they do that? Well, when you went ahead and turned the clay on the potter's wheel, as you were working it, all of a sudden a stone would work out, and it would collapse the pot piece of pottery. If you left the stone in there and you fired it, that stone would get heated up and it would explode. And everything in the kiln would be destroyed. Not just your vessel, but everybody else's vessel in there. God has a refining fire in all of our lives. And so, therefore, sometimes when we're going through life, God will allow trials to come into our life to teach us. And God is working the clay. He is pulling out the stones out of our life. He's pulling out the impurities out of our life. Why? Because he knows that when real trials and troubles will come, it will explode and it will destroy your life and everybody else's lives around it. So don't get mad at God when all of a sudden you go through the fiery trials of life. God is going through a purging time in your life. The trials of life helps us to be patient, Peter says. So delight. Why? Because God knows best. Be soft and pliable in the master's hands. Look at verse number five. Verse 5 says, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. The word commit means to remove or to roll or roll away. It has the idea of seeking, seeking an opportunity or an occasion to trust. One of the words that is described in commit is the word, you ready for this? Wallow. Do you, any, do you know of anything or anyone that would wallow? Anybody? A hog. You can go ahead and clean up a hog and put a, put a beautiful pretty bow on its, around its neck and you turn your back. The first thing they're going to do if they find a mud hole, they're going to go in whole hog. And they're going to waller in that. There was a, I heard a joke I'm not good at jokes, so bear with me. There was a chicken and a, a pig walking around in the barnyard. And the chicken says, hey, do you know that it's World Feed the Hungry Day coming up in two weeks? And the pig says, oh, that's great. We ought to feed the hungry in the world. And the chicken says, yeah. He says, I think I'm going to donate some eggs. He says, how about if you go ahead and donate some bacon? And he says, oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. And all of a sudden he says, wait a minute. 
He says, for you, that's just a casual commitment. But for me, it's more than just a commitment. You see, listen, we need to go ahead and jump in whole hog in things as far as trusting in God. Amen? To waller. If one wallers in something, they give their all to it. Why should we commit? He gave us all for us. He was committed to go to the cross. How about if we commit to live the Christian life? Amen? In all thy ways acknowledge him. And then, look what it says in verse 7. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. <coughs> Rest. Just be quiet. Remember what it says in Psalm 46, verse 10? Anybody know what that verse says? There you go. Be still and know that I am God. There's a lot said in verse 1 through 9. We ought to go ahead and read that. <coughs> we ought to cease. Be still. Allow ourselves to be faint and feeble in the hand of God. The Bible says in John chapter number 10, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. There the Bible talks about how that we're in the hand of Jesus and Jesus is in the hand of the Father. He said, I and my Father are one. And you and I are in the midst of his hand. I guess we ought to rest. Why? Because he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, Ephesians 3.20. Are you troubled? Are you going through tough times? Rest in the Lord. You rest in your circumstances or in friends or you rest in, in uh, earthly things. It won't, it won't uh, go very far. Someone once said, let go and let God. We ought to cease from our own strugglings. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul was struggling in his life. And he prayed and asked the Lord three times to remove the thorn in the flesh. And God told him, he says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might be depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee and my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me therefore I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches and necessities and persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake for when I am weak then I am strong why because Jesus does all things well quit struggling Christian quit fighting against God just be soft and pliable in the master's hands and let God have his perfect work in your life. God's trying to do something in your life and with your life. Quit fighting against him. Amen? Quit fighting against God. Be still and know that I am God. Look at verse number 9 through 11. I'll close. Now, in verse 1, it says, fret not. In verse 3, it says we are to trust. In verse 4, it says we are to delight. In verse 5, we are to commit. In verse number 7, it says we are to rest. In verse number 8, it says to cease. In other words, we are to go ahead and be still. Let God have his way. Quit fighting. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Now, verse 9 doesn't have a word to, to precede the thought. 
But it does mean this. It does mean to understand. For evildoers shall be cut off. You need to understand that. But those that wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. You need to understand that. When everything is all said and done, and we look back from eternity in heaven, back on our life, we'll see how all the puzzle fits together. How many of you put jigsaw puzzles together? My wife and I, we, we do that occasionally, especially in the winter months when things are slow. We'll take our dining room table and put one of those thousand piece puzzles out there and and you look at one piece and we, you think, how in the world does that fit in? And some of those pieces by themselves are pretty ugly. You ever find a puzzle piece like that in your life? You say, how in the world, Lord, is this going to fit in? How is this going to glorify God? But you know, when you put that last piece of puzzle in, and it's complete, and you look down on it and you say, ah, that's how it all fits together. And that's what's going to happen when we get to heaven. We're going to look back on our life and we're going to say, that's what God was doing and I didn't see it. All things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen? So verse number nine, for evildoers, understand this, shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Verse 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Christian, when everything's all said and done, understand that. As you're going through the trials of life and when all of a sudden the fiery trials start heating up in your life, understand that God is in control and God works all things together for his will and his purpose. You see, you need to understand God is in control. Verse 9 and 10, the wicked's going to meet their doom. They're not going to torment you anymore. The righteous, verse number 11, is going to be blessed by God. Why? Why? Because God's got his timing. He has his blessings. And God will have his judgment. So as the songwriter said and wrote in his one hit wonder. The only song he's known for. Don't worry. Be happy. Trust God. Rely on him. Trust in the Lord and do good. And the Lord will bring it to pass. God is in control. I saw Curtis Hudson sing a song as he was dying of brain cancer, I believe it was. Was it brain cancer that he died of? Prostate cancer. And I don't think I knew that. I thought it was uh, brain cancer. But anyway, I saw a video of him just, I think it was about a month or so before he uh, passed. He was at a preacher's meeting. And he got up before everybody and he started singing. I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side. And shortly after that, he passed. We are on the winning side. Just trust God. God will work everything out. And five seconds into eternity, nothing else is going to matter. We're on the winning side. Let's bow for a word of prayer, please. Every head bowed and every eye closed. The Lord has spoken to you and you'd like to pray. The altar is open and I'll close in a few minutes. Would you come if the Lord has spoken to you?
Lord, tonight we are thankful for your word. We're thankful, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Lord, for every child of God that is struggling, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to trust you. Help us, Lord, to make good and godly decisions based upon your word. Lord, we ask and pray, Lord, that you'd help us not, not to fret, not to worry. Help us, Lord, to realize that you do all things well, and, and Lord, that you're in control. Help us, Lord, to commit our ways unto thee, I pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. I pray, Lord, you'd watch over us as we go our ways. Help us, Lord, to be a witness to those that are around us, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Don't forget to vote.